What's up? Long live your turtle here. And in this video, I want to show you guys how I built my jungle themed turtle pond. I previously released the overview and walk around of this jungle themed pond. It's an awesome project. And I just wanted to show you guys how I did it. A couple months ago, I went into the middle of nowhere, Colorado, out in the farmland, and I picked myself up a 100 gallon stock tank. The person I bought it from was using it for his horses, but hey, I turned it around and I'm using it for my turtle, Moses. Moses loves the new pond. She's much more relaxed and she has lots of space for herself now. I even got a few feeder goldfish that are surviving that Moses onslaught. But take a look at this video. I hope it gives you some great ideas. Enjoy. So this is my first turtle pond. Really excited to set this up. I've always had a fish tank for the turtles, but it's time we upgrade for Moses. Moses was biting my other turtles, so Moses needs to be separated. Little did Moses know that doing something bad like that actually is really going to work out for her because now she gets a little paradise pond. So without further ado, let's get this thing together. Let's get Moses going and into a nice spot. Right now, it's a little bit ramshacky. He's got some a cinder block in there with an old basking ramp I made, and then uh, it just doesn't look great. So let's get Moses something nice to swim around in. Let's go. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is I put this turtle tub up on a couple of cinder blocks. So there are two reasons I put my pond on cinder blocks. The first reason is just to elevate the pond so that's closer to me, I'm closer to Moses, and it's a lot easier to do work on the pond. And the second reason is this pond is in my basement, it's on absolute ground level, so in order to get a siphon going, I need the pond raised a little bit to get that differential in height, to get the differential in pressure, so a siphon can start. And you'll notice I also put a piece of plywood between the pond and the cinder blocks, and that was just to get a little more level platform because the cinder blocks have a bunch of gaps in them. All right, first component that I wanna put around this, it looks quite bad just sitting out here as a huge Rubbermaid label. It's kind of faded and scratched and doesn't look great. So I kind of wanna cover the front of the turtle tub. And to do that, I'm simply gonna put this wall I made. These pieces of wood are actually from Lowe's. They're meant to be a part of a picket fence. So I use them for pretty much just that. I just laid them right next to each other and then took a board and attached them on the back and then attached both of them together with this post piece here and only had to do a half because luckily in my mud room I have just this corner here and I want to save time and money and effort and I'm just going to do a half halfway around. So two things of note I want to mention before I put this in place. I left a gap here um, that's going to go up against the wall and that will allow me to have my filter tubes kind of carry over without coming over the top of the, the fence I made here and that will just, it'll look a little better. And then down at the bottom, it's hard to see but I didn't bring the fence board all the way to the ground and that's because I have a lot of tubes and electrical that are going to go up underneath and then around to different parts of this. So you'll see that when I set it up, but it'll make it look, again, a lot better. So. All right, so this is nice and snug around the sides of the turtle tub, and it looks really good. It covers over that bad view that you get when you first see the tub. And now really what we, I want to do is take the top view, which again, you're just seeing the rims of this black kind of faded scratched Rubbermaid stock tank and I want to kind of cover that over. I want it to be about a turtle inside and just the overall ambiance of looking at this turtle tub. I'm going to put a trim around the sides and I'll put the basking platform and a ramp on this side. That way she has plenty of room to slide off and not just immediately hit the wall which is a big problem with all the tanks. <laughs> So I got all my trim pieces laid around the turtle tub. As you can see, there's four pieces. The reason this one on the far side is so big, that's where Moses' basking area is gonna be. And 
This one is a little thicker because I'm going to have some hoses going through it and I want it to be able to go straight down into the water. Again, this stock tank is a little slanted, so it needs to get off the wall a little bit, otherwise you're going to hit that slant as you go down. This back wall is pretty thick, just to cover over some of the stock tank. And then this front side is thin, I'm not going to do much with it, so there's no reason to go overly thick here. So with this design, I want to have very minimal anchors or brackets or any sort of angles going into the wall and having the wall be any sort of support. I want to basically use the um, turtle tub, which is really strong, and this kind of wall I made that has a little uh, seam to basically hold these four boards around where they are. However, this board over here, uh, because the turtle tub is so close to the wall, it's kind of flimsy and it'll fall if I don't do any sort of attachment to anything else. So I went with putting brackets back to back um, on both sides to this far board and the front board. I'll connect this board here and two reasons I, why I like it. First, what I just mentioned, which was I don't want to attach anything to the wall, I don't want to put brackets on the wall. And the second is I can really easily take this apart because I'm just going to bolt on uh, one bracket, is going to bolt to the other bracket on uh, both sides, so just take those bolts out. And I can pick up this entire piece and why I really like that is this piece is gonna have an LED light strip on it. It's gonna have your input and output uh, of your turtle filter, and it's gonna have your air hoses going in here. So there's a lot going on with this board. I wanna be able to take it in and out really easily. So my next step is to basically run all my tubing and my wires through over the side here and to their respective holes. So first things first, I have a Fluval FX6 Austin filter, by the way, but I don't like the tubing. It's too short because it was cut for my aquarium. So what I'm doing is actually replacing that tubing with, with some hose I had from a pump that I was using to pump out water from my aquarium. Um, this actually comes in really handy because it's one inch diameter, which is the same diameter as the hose from the Fluval FX6. So I'm just gonna use that uh, hose instead and that'll go longer. So what's great about this tubing is it's flexible and therefore you can bend it around and use barb connectors like this one that you can just push it on and it'll have a tough time getting off, but I'm also gonna connect it with a metal clamp um, that tightens when you screw it. That'll make it extra secure and uh, I'll trust it a little more down here. Since I'm modifying the tubing to the stock filter I have, you gotta make sure this is leak proof, so. All right, so I got the plumbing in there. Everything fit real nice. The tubing is a little stiff right now, so I'm going to bend it around later um, just to get it off this little ledge here. Uh, air stones are in. And yeah, this actually worked out really nice doing this myself instead of trying to fill around with the old tubes. It's a lot more elegant and will work much better for my setup. All right, you guys, so we have a lot of the basics set up now. My plumbing's working. I had this running overnight, everything is looking good. It's about time that we put together the ramp for the turtle, because that's the last part of this project that's going to make this whole thing fully operational. So the first thing I did to this off camera, um, but I'll explain what I did, was basically I took a few acrylic sheets. I actually had this left over. I think they're about 0.1 inches thick. This stuff works really well uh, to be a ramp for your turtle to get in and out of whatever aquarium or turtle tub they're in. And the reason I like it is it's pretty sturdy, especially if you have more than one sheet acting together and um, you can break it at sizes you want. Not super easy to break, uh, quite difficult actually. You have to gouge it out and then you have to snap it on that crease you just made in it. Uh, but you can do it. It's also the easiest way I know to make a good ramp that is basically waterproof. It's just acrylic, so if it's wood, it's possibly gonna get rotted and uh, start to get slimy and moldy. Um, if it's other things, it might just not look as good, but with acrylic, you can do a lot with it. So how I actually put this ramp together was I took my five pieces of acrylic. Two of them are the full length of the entire ramp and part that's going to basically attach to the bottom of the platform and those two pieces are bent with a heat gun and then they're glued together with Gorilla Epoxy. I love epoxy because it fully cures and once it fully cures, it 
will not react and it will not put harmful substances into the water, which is really important because this is going to be sitting in the water. And once you have your angled ramp, it's about 45 degree angle, then I stacked the other three pieces on top of the actual ramp portion because you are clamping the bottom of the ramp underneath that three quarter inch board that's gonna be your basking platform. So there's gonna be a three quarter inch gap between the bottom of the ramp and the top of the basking platform. So you want that to be flush. So I stacked three pieces that made that flush so that the turtle can easily transition from the ramp up to the actual basking platform itself. And I did the same thing. I used Gorilla Epoxy and then I clamped it all together and I let it dry. So acrylic is extremely slippery. In order for my turtle to actually climb the ramp and get onto the basking platform to bask, I needed to add something that she could dig her claws into so that she could pull herself up. And what I went with was a natural coconut fiber mat. And this is very popular to use in terrariums. It dries out really easily and it looks super natural. So it'll go really well with my setup. And what I did was I just used a little epoxy on each corner so that it doesn't fall off. All right. So this is my fully assembled ramp. It has the coconut fiber mat that the turtle's gonna climb on. I soaked this for 48 hours. The water um, came out clear after the third time trying and it's ready to be installed into the tub. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a board that is slightly wider than the ramp and put it underneath the back of the ramp. And then I'm going to drill one, two, three, four screws up into the big board that's gonna be my basking area for the turtle. Um, I did a bunch of tests trying to figure out the best way to do it. And this was the best way. Otherwise, in my other design, I just, glued, I just gobbed on a ton of glue and just glued it to the bottom of the board. And that actually works, but I don't think it'll last forever. I think this method will last forever. And if I want to replace it or if I want to do anything, I can just take four screws out and I can do whatever I want. So it's really versatile and let's see how it looks. guys so now I got my ramp it's very sturdy on there just had a board with a couple screws in it to clamp this thing tight now the turtle is gonna climb up here and it's gonna bask around this area so this is just wood that I painted over it does have an exterior spray paint primer and paint on it that will be pretty good at withstanding the turtle climbing on here and basking all wet and then getting off. But I want to give a little more protection to this wood. And I'm going to do that by using these sticky vinyl tiles. So I'll just use three of them. Then I have to cut them to fit. But these will just stick right on here. If they ever get dirty or they get damaged, I can just peel it off and replace it. So it looks nice. This will dry a lot easier when the turtle gets up here and it gets off. And, and it's not wood, so it won't get scratched as badly and it won't be as permanent because I can just replace this. So I'm gonna get these on here and I'm gonna install this and see how it looks. started doing this before I actually started recording it so what I'm doing now is I'm putting up this giant tapestry and it is a sick jungle theme and what I'm gonna do is try to get as tight to this corner of the wall as possible so what I want to do is I'm gonna take these boards I painted them but I realized I don't really need to um, because you'll see in a second but I'm basically stapling the tapestry to the board and then I'm going to roll it over so that way you don't see the board at all when I fasten it up on top of the wall. I think it'll look really good because it'll kind of blend in. Um, you might... So I'm going to do that for each corner and then I'll be able to hang it up and then I'll make it taut 
down at the bottom where I can do what I want a lot easier because this is a really tall ceiling, this is a really big tapestry, so it's going to be difficult to do anything up there. So I want to do it all down here, just put two screws in to hold it up there, but still have it spread out really evenly. That way I can make it nice and taut on the way down. Uh, so bear with me and let's work on this. So we have everything stapled together. What I have to do now is I have to take off my hanger for the basking lamp because uh, that's going to get in the way. I'm actually going to go straight through this in the same holes once I get this thing up there. Um, that way it'll blend in pretty well uh, as much as it can. And uh, then I'll make a little hole for the cords and I'll be able to plug those in uh, before I actually attach the bottom of it. So. Next thing I need to figure out is how I'm going to get this thing taut. Um, so I'm going to clear off everything here, see what I can move around. I can take all these sideboards off. Uh, the goal is to get it underneath where I'll start decorating around the edges. Right, so we got the background up, it's taut, and the basking lamp is installed. The next thing to do is to decorate the sides using insulation foam cut to different sizes. So we're going to use rigid pink foam board, and this is from Home Depot. They're two foot by two foot by one inch. And I'm showing you here the tools I use, which is basically just a bunch of utility knives at different sizes. We're going to use silicone to glue everything together and it's kind of a temporary glue, which I like. And then this is just a caulking gun to use that silicone. So this is me just showing the board itself. What we're gonna have to do is cut it to fit around the perimeter. And again, these are two foot by two foot. So it's gonna take a little bit of cutting. And in order to cut these, all you really need to do is figure out what size you want. And I hold a straight edge square bar just to kind of guide the knife and I just dig in um, and it just comes off that easily. You don't even have to go all the way through with the knife. You need to go about three quarters and then you can just snap off the rest and it's just a really easy process actually. Um, so just do that with a bunch of different sizes to make your different type of ground elevation um, to try to make this as realistic as you can. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's nature. Nature's not perfect. So just make a bunch of random sizes and kind of go from there and see how you like it. So one thing to note as it comes up here is in the back wall, there's that platform where I had all my tubing for the fil filter and I covered that all over so you can't see it now with that foam board in front of it, which is going to be a good look at the end. So the next thing I did was I just went to town with that same exacto knife I used to cut it to just gouge tons of pieces out and to make it look a lot more like natural ground and rock. So I basically took all the straight 90 degree angles that are part of that foam board and just tried to round everything off and just take off random chunks. And the more you do, the more natural it looks. So in this next step, I used a fast drying cement to cover over all of that foam board to make it look like a natural rock structure. Use a very watery, ratio to that cement so that it's a lot easier to spread. So once everything is dried to your liking, the next step was to spray paint all of it in different shades. I used some brown, a grayish color, a dark brown, and a green to make it look like ground rock and some moss at the same time. And this is the end result. It looked really awesome. Um, you just have those different textures there to make it look a lot more natural uh, instead of just having one color you want a couple of different colors. So the next step is to install all your jungle foliage. I did some hanging vines and then I did my little ground plants that are really easy to install because you can just stick it straight through that foam board and it just sticks right in there. These are all plastic plants, nothing special. 
I got them on Amazon, I think they're for parties or something. But then I also put this jungle vine in that's part of a terrarium setup. And that's it. You just try to make it look as natural as possible. Chaos is good. And put as many as you want in there so it looks cool. I forgot to actually videotape me installing this, but I wanted to go over it real quick with you and I apologize in advance. But in the back here on this back platform where you have your filter tubes going in, I actually installed an LED strip right on the edge here. Um, the strip itself is flexible and you cut it to size. Um, I'll show you a picture of it on the video right now. and. I nested it inside of this aluminum channel that has a white plastic cover on it, and that's just to give it some protection from maybe Moses trying to jump up and bite it, or just from all the water and everything splashing. I want it to be protected and I want it to be nestled in there. Um, and the good thing about this aluminum channel is it comes with these clips so that I can easily hold the aluminum channel to this board instead of me trying to glue or do some other kind of clamp onto that board with that LED strip. Now, the cord itself goes underneath this board over here, there's a little gap, and it goes down into my power strip. So that LED light gives me the opportunity to light up the bottom of this otherwise cavernous turtle tub with its black walls and black base. I put in some light pond rocks that I got from Lowe's and those are nice light colors so that the light bounces off of them. It's really easy to see Moses and it looks really good. The LED strip helped light up that water, but it was still really dark in this room. This is a mud room, it's basically a big closet, and I just had that basking lamp on the outside here and a really small lamp on the ceiling. And I need a little more, so I did some awesome spotlighting onto this tapestry and then around into bright portions of the actual tapestry itself so it looked a little more natural but I used this outdoor uplighting that usually just stick in the ground, but I put it on little blocks and then pointed it into certain locations. It lit up brilliantly and looks beautiful and highly suggested if you have a dark area. And there you have it. We have completed the jungle themed pond. It started as a simple rubber made 100 gallon stock tank and now it's Moses' little sanctuary. Thanks for watching everyone. Like, subscribe, ask questions, comment. See ya!